So welcome everybody to this penultimate lecture. Today we're gonna to be talking about tree recursion. We left this open as kind of a fluff filler lecture in the last minute. We said, you know, this is a really cool idea we wanna make sure you guys see. It's called tree recursion. So technology in the news, Microsoft has released the Kinect. Probably all know about it, but if you don't, it uh, operates your video game and entertainment system and CD system with your body and change. You, I think you, I saw the video. You take your hand and you go, next play, next play. And it recognizes your hand, recognizes who you are. You walk up and rather than lock in, okay, this is Dan Logan. It says, I wave and it knows my face and I wave and it knows I'm Dan rather than my brother or my sister or my dad. Or my... That's cool. Uh, body motion control games, you're playing golf like this, you're hitting, you're spiking, you saw the video, it was really cool. So let's see if that, I mean, I just love uh, new input devices and this is the taking the Wii a couple steps further without any control at all. PS3 folks have come up with, I think what's called the Move, Move, it's a little bit more, a little bit more accurate uh, version of the Wii, you can do the same kind of thing, but I think they're a generation behind. This may be the future just doing things without, we're just with, with voice recognition and body recognition. I love it. Okay, so get your clickers out. We're ready for some good stuff. Before we jump into that, while, while you're waiting for this, I want to make sure you all see how much awesome things are in store for you. How many awesome things? Uh, what we have here is a full calendar. It gets even busy. You think it gets busier for you, it gets busier for us too. Uh, we're all excited about the end of the semester and how this is looking out. This is basically a, a copy of the front page of the website. So if you don't write this down, this is not in your slides, but the front page of our website has this information. I just tried to put it in a way that was kind of digestible. So today we're talking about tree recursion. In lab today, you are doing your project. Okay, the last big chunk of that. On Tuesday, the TAs have offered to have project night, which we had for the midterm, uh, which is a time where you can get questions answered uh, about your project, which is awesome to try to help you guys. Uh, and that's 8.30 to 10 p.m. in 306 Soda. There's a Beyond Blocks in Python. This is the Series 3 and try to take BYOB and move to the next language. And if Python is the next language for you, that's the third in that series. On Wednesday, Brian and I stand up here and our TA stand up here and we have our farewell lecture. It's only about a 40 minute, maybe even 35 minute lecture because the last 20 minutes is the feedback. We need to have the course surveys. It's really important that everyone fill in this course surveys. What we, what's gonna happen is we, don't, we leave the room, so we don't have any idea what happens in these course surveys. You're gonna write your name on a post-it and give it to him, dump it into a bag. It's like you voted into a bag, right? Uh, and so we don't know, that, that is disassociated with your, ex HCAM will do it. So the HCAM will do the, the worry of like separating from a form, put their name here and put the thing there and it's all done, okay? So that way, if you come to lecture as, you, as everyone here in the room today does, then you're all set. If you, ha if you don't normally come to lecture, this is for those watching on video, you have to do this before you can take your online final. The online final is just like you had your midterm, right? You go to the lab, you do like a little hour project, and we give you a chance to use um, BYOB to support you. You can't use the web, you can't use email or texting or Facebook or Twitter, but you can use BYOB. Before we're gonna hand it to you, you have to, it's gonna be the second hour of your two hour lab is gonna be this online final. Before we will hand this to you, you have to show us that your name is on that list of someone who is filling that survey. So if you did it in lecture, no worries. You can start the exam there. But if you haven't, then 20 minutes before that final, you're gonna to have to fill in that survey. Okay, so for each of the three lab sections, just come to lab. If you don't come to lecture, come to lab this Wednesday. It's important, because that's on your final exam. That's your final exam. 15 points out of the 80 is gonna be determined on Wednesday. Bring a pencil. Yeah, yeah. Okay, same kind of format as it was in the midterm. You guys know that format, same drill. All right. Oh yes, yeah, sorry, thank you, Brian. Bring a pencil for the HKN survey uh, on, in lecture or in lab. And we'll probably have, I think they usually have some extras, but yes. On Friday at almost midnight, a minute before midnight is gonna be the due date for your project. You all know that was there three weeks in advance. Um, so hopefully you guys are really set. You're just fine tweaking, you're adding some bells and whistles. It all works by now. It's all feeling really good. You're Ha, let's get a thumbs up, thumbs up. Actually, let's do a survey right now. This is called a on-the-fly question. Here we go. How is, okay, here we go. Uh, my project. Okay, A, done. B, uh, nearly done. 
Uh, C. Um, a, a week away. Okay. D. Uh, I'm in trouble. Okay. Might not finish. Uh, e. Haven't started. All right. So, ready? Go. Okay. So, distribution. We got some distribution here, as you could expect. I'm hoping that, that <laughs> I'm hoping the D's and E's will move over to the C's and B's. All right. So, that's what I think. Good. Thank you. Okay. Love the question on the fly stuff. All right. Um, okay. So, then... Project do. Then you rest. Then you rest for a little while. Because here's the fun part. Then the fun, it's a lot of push this week. A lot of push, like push it, like a burp. Push. But then the fun starts. Like, oh, it's baby, it's the wonderful smiling pictures. OK, so watch this. Mo I haven't had two kids, I understand. Monday, final project demos. What do you mean? What does it mean? We feed you free food. OK, I'll say it again, louder. Free food for undergraduate students. All right, so come to this demo. It's almost four hours. Drop in. We'll try to schedule guys up. Bring your partner. We're going to film you if you want to be filmed, OK? Here's the point of this. The point is to share the best of the best. We're giving you four hours to be here. We'll, it'll be a party. It really is a party. There's food, there's drink, there's cake. Oh, let's have cake. Cake. I will bring cake. We're going to make the most fun final project demo. You, what else do you, what do you guys? What do you guys want? Legal, not, not, not illegal. What else do you want? <laughs> brownies, make some brownies, and they'll be legal, but they'll be fun brownies. We'll have something fun. All right. What's the point? The point is, I want to have everybody participate. I'd love to have the entire class show up to celebrate each other. This is really, right, you're all the, the, the hard work was like Thursday, Friday. By the way, parenthetically, you may use your slip days for this. So you could even work till one slip day is Saturday, two slip days is Sunday, three slip days is kind of, Monday. So in theory, if you have all three slip days left, you could in theory be working until midnight Monday to finish your project without penalty. OK. Stay with me. Question. Ah, OK. Slip days are TAs. Or we'll work on that. Work with the TAs to get your slip day count. We'll work with them. Yeah, talk to your TAs in lab. OK. That, that, that's a great time thing to do here or in lab, in this lab or that lab. OK. So, you're all coming to this event. It's in 306 Soda. We reserve the big room, the big presentation room, high definition cameras. You get up there, you smile and say, this is the awesome thing we made. And you just kind of demo it. It's awesome. Here's what's so cool. This is a pilot. This course is a national pilot, right? I want to show off to the rest of the world what Berkeley students can do okay, with BYOB and with three weeks to put together a project. I think we can blow people away with all the good stuff. I, I've walked around and seen some things. I'm excited. So, Please show that up. Now, here's the cool part. If you demoed, if you have a midterm project that's different from your final project, you can demo that too. I will film it all. And then if you want, and you sign a little form saying, Dan, it's OK to release this to the world, we will share this with the world. I'm talking about the world. YouTube, the world will see your stuff. It'll be big. It'll be really cool. I think it'd be really cool, OK? So it's a chance for you. So comb your hair, right? Dress something nice. Don't suit up. But wear something nice. You know, maybe a cow logo would be kind of pretty cool, right? Everybody wears a big cow blaze. Stand up. You got a cow logo. You know, the thing. Wear that kind of thing, right? Bam. Cow logo -y thing, right? Show off the pride, right? Go Bears. So we'll show off our stuff. So everyone, please come to this. this is, it's voluntary, but I want to get everybody to come. Here's why. Here's why. Here's why. You will get bonus points if you come. There's something in this class called APA, Effort, Participation, Altruism. Participation means you do things like this, and we recognize you with a couple of sprinkle points at the end of the year. That doesn't, that's not going to hurt your grade, folks. Sprinkle points is very good. Okay? In the past, sprinkle points have moved people up a plus minus grade. So if you were B and you got a lot of sprinkle points, you become a B plus. That's pretty cool. Okay? A, A plus. Love that. Huh? Huh? All right. So you, you vote. You, the community, not us, not us, the ivory tower people. No, you, the populace, the the, the people, raw to the people. The people vote for the best projects. What do you mean the best? I don't know, the best five or something. We pick a couple, right? We pick like 20 minutes worth of project demos. Why? Because the next day is CS Ed Day. We're bringing 250 students, high school students from the Bay Area, to come to Cal. 
These are people, basically, if you're a freshman, just a year behind you. How amazing it would be for a high school student to watch somebody at Berkeley, who they probably already respect and think they're, they're gods because you know, getting Berkeley is a hard thing and not all of them are gonna get in, obviously. So they're like, oh, you guys are so smart. But not only that, you are showing them what you can do only one year past high school if you're a freshman. That's pretty cool. So I would love to have five, 20 minutes worth of ridiculous demos. Redun so ridiculous is redunculous. That's how ridiculous it is. You guys choose your best. You choose, you vote for the best 20 minutes of demonstrations get shown in front of 250 students, the dean, the department chair. I mean, this is big time, people, okay? And that's recorded in high definition also. So you get a double high definition recording, fame, fortune, never hurts, okay? Bam, bam, this is our, our, our week. Both of these are voluntary activities, but we want you to do them if you can, okay? Then, final exam at A1 Hearst Annex. I have no idea where that is. Brian says he knows it's over in the Hearst by PFA and the Hearst Field Annex. Yeah, but A1, I don't know what A1 is. It's one of the, okay, so make sure you get there in advance. Well, maybe by Wednesday we'll figure out where A1 is, but it's in this crazy place and it'll be there. All right, and that's a week away. So you have a whole week to study and have some fun. Um, and I think, Luke, I'm missing a review session in here somewhere probably. Sunday, 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 12, 12, 12, 12, all right, 12, 12, 10 is gonna be the big review session, okay? So we'll put that up on the website. He's, Luke is doing it now, okay? Okay, so far, any questions about the plan? This is detail, I make sure you all know the most important thing is you're having your final, half, 15 points out of your 80 is happening this lab time, okay? On, officially, higher functions in Lambda, that's what it's about, okay? Okay, so now. Yes, Brian, sorry. We're gonna have 250 students here we're gonna need some volunteers in the afternoon to help us kind of manage a lab. You'll have students come in for 30 minutes and do something. We would love to have volunteers to help train them in BYOB. There might be a lab of just BYOB. We might have a few of these labs. And you folks, there is no better person on campus to share the love of BYOB than these people in this room right now and in this class right now. So Brian, you wanna to talk, to talk to you? How do, we, how do we coordinate this? Send Brian an email. He loves to get a lot of email, so he's not, he's not, he's not up to 6,000 yet, so keep hitting him with that. Um, write, write a little BYB script to send me all every five minutes. And then, about your volunteering for that, okay? Questions about the schedule? Feeling good? Loving it, right? All right. I know recursion well. Tell me, people. Ready? Go. I know recursion well. Tell me how well, yes, what's up? Something wrong with the mic? Out of battery, right? I saw that, that it was low on, do you have an extra? Oh, man, what are you? Hey, hey, a Voxo battery. Okay. Uh oh. That's not good. I saw that blinking. Two, two double A's. I have my other mic is on. I have, my, I have my fancy schmancy. I do my fancy schmancy. Fancy schmancy be good? I should have fancy schmancy from the beginning, right? Oh, I'm so, I'm so sorry. I should have. What am I fancy schmancy from the beginning? That's true. I figured, well, we have, we have two, I don't need three, but good point for the Sanchez Mancy. Okay, all right, how are we doing? Everybody in? Okay, voted. And just for fun, let's share it, freeze it, and then go display. Actually, no content up to here, so it's not too bad if I miss this part of the lecture. Right? Okay. Okay, here's how you did. Okay, so we're doing okay. Okay, we're doing okay. I wouldn't, wouldn't mind having more people slosh to the left, but recursion, okay? So make sure, this is influencing, by the way, this is really important for influencing our TAs we're gonna be giving review sessions. So that'll influence what questions they give you in the review sessions, okay? Next question, hide. Ready? Next slide. I know lambda and higher order functions well. By the way, testing on Wednesday on these topics. This is where I really care the most that you guys have high scores on this one. Okay, mic in, go, mic in, go, power on, now. Okay, all right, 33, 34, okay? Stop and display, come on, A's. Hiya, hiya. Okay, well, folks, we gotta get, you, you're being tested on this on Wednesday. I'm just letting you know. <laughs> this would be imperative that you kind of try to get that number up, okay? Um, do we have a space? I'm wondering whether that midterm support thingy that's happening, the, th this project night, I'm wondering whether that isn't 
perhaps better utilized as a Hoff reviewee, Lambda Hoff reviewee night. I think, I think the, the masses have spoken. See how we react? See how dynamic we are? Adaptive? See how I love it? Love it. All right. Hoff review. And John is not here, so we can assign things to him. So John's working on that. All right. OK. Ready? Here we go. OK. And then the final question, as I push record on this thing, the final question, I know recursion plus lambda half well. And I will now hit you with that. Now, can I, get, can I get an A? Can I get an A? I'm trying to be realistic now. Can I get an A? OK. And the people have spoken. Ah. How about we spend an entire lecture talking about that? Huh? Yes. How about that? Let's do it. Party on. OK. Review. So how about a motivated question? Stephanie, I'm going to sit down now. If you can do a little zoomy zoomy, that'd be great. So I'm going to motivate this with, and we're going to program together. We are a group programming session. Love it. Love it. All review. This is all review. This is the four rules about game theory. Not relevant unless you care about game theory, right? But we're going to be programming this. Why? Remember this game, 1, 2, 10? Fun little simple game, right? OK. How about the answer, which was, where's my mousey mousey? On the left, I wrote down whether things are win or lose. Do you remember that part at all? 1, 2, 10 was a win. The game starts at 0. And the way you win is you say 1. That's the way. You, you go first, you say 1. The opponent is, is then handed a losing position. Remember that part a little bit? And then, whatever they say, you say the opposite. So then they're handed four. Then it's their turn, and they're, it's my opponent. You're the class. I'm the smart guy. So I say one. The class says, I say, between those, and it's now three. So now you have four. Class, sorry, you have four. So what do you say? And I say, between and it's now seven. The class now has seven. Remember, the first person to ten wins. What does the class say? Flankel. I say, opposite flankel. She said one, that makes it eight. I say two, which is the opposite of one. I win by getting to ten first. If you say two to nine, I say one to ten. I win either case. Okay? Seven was a lose. Ten is a lose because now you have ten and you've lost. Why? Because getting to ten is the winning move. If you're at ten, that means the other guy got to ten and you've lost. Does that make sense? We're going to try to derive this thing. Why? We're going to try to solve the game using higher order functions, lambda, and recursion. You ready for this? Together. Go. Let's go. I'm going to define a couple things on the right. A position and a move. A position is like the ball, like the little circle here. The little circle is the position. The arrow is the move. OK? So far, so good? OK. We only need three blocks to define this game. This is how beautiful this is. This, by the way, is called, often called the API, or the Application Programming Interface. This is the interface for a game. In order to program a game into my system, you need only write three blocks. A do move, a generate moves, and a primitive. Do move says, actually take the arrow. If you're given a position and a move, let's just like, here's a, here's a circle and an arrow. Follow the arrow and give me a new circle. Don't change the position. Give me a new circle. Okay? Give me a new position. Generate move says, for any circle, for any position, give me all the moves you got okay? to find that tree. Primitive says, is the game over? You got to know that, otherwise you go up for, forever, right? Kind of have a recursion based case kind of thing. Are you, is the game over? If the game's over, the value is either win, lose, or tie. If the game's not over, primitive value is going to say undecided. Is it like, I don't know yet? Okay? So far, so good? Questions so far? We're going to write these four things for the game. 1, 2, 10. It'd be so easy. Then we're going to write the higher function lambda recursion solver together in real time. Let's do it. It's called value position p. Let's start with the game part. OK? So I have BYB right here. I happen to have Marshall McLuhan right here. So first thing I'm going to do is make a block. Dan said we got. I'm going to call it other, reporter. I won't change the type of these things. I just have to give a name. Thank you. Sorry for that. That's a good call. Make a block. Give it a name. That'd be good. Reporter. I'm going to call it what Dan said to call it, which was do move m on position p. By the way, the answer's on the back of your sheet, but don't go there yet, because the answer is really like the, the hard part. What do you do? 
do move percent M on position percent P, okay? All of you can see this here, okay? And it's an other, because it's nice, other makes it great. It's kind of easy, easy to find that code. Okay, so let's do it. Do move out on position P. Positions are numbers. They're just the numbers, right? One, two, three, four, five. And the move is either, say, one or two. So how do you actually make the move in this game? It's the simplest way to do it. Go. Give me some love. Somebody volunteer how to, how to give me love on this. How to write, do move. There's a report probably in here. Okay. Position's a number. The move's a number. The position might be five. Your move might be two. The new position I want is seven. What'd you do to, to get that? P plus M. Simplest thing you could ever imagine. M plus P. Yoink, yoink, I'm done. Look at that, we've written do move. Is this fun? Easy, right? This game is the simplest game you could ever write, by the way. One of the simplest. Make a block. Next one, Dan said to write, generate moves from position P. All right, here we go. Make it other, even though it returns a list, let's call it a, a, an other, okay? Generate moves from position P, percent P. Okay, okay, so this is gonna return a list of all the arrows, all the moves you've got. So, the position is like, I don't know, three. What are the moves available to you? One and, one and two. How about the position five? What's the moves available to you? One and two. Except, what happens? What if it's nine, right? Well, we can make this easier by saying, look, if you get nine or 10, sorry, if you get 10 or 11, then you win first, then you win. If you say that, that's, that kind of makes life easier, 10 or 11, and then, it's all, then you always generate one or two. There's no if or then. And the end case is, if you're at 10, you've lost, because the other guy got to 10 first. If you're 11, you've lost, because they got to 11 first, okay? And they're both primitives, you don't do it generally. So, it's easy, watch this, report. List, one and two. I'm done. Always two moves available. We'll make this the case where 11 is a special case where you get to 10 or 11 first, you win. Okay? So far, so good? If you don't like this, we can make it so that if you're at nine, you'll only generate the list of one. Would that be better? We can do that if you want. That's the original game. You wanna do that one? Yeah, let's do that. Let's do that, I like it. Let's be a little cleaner, thank you, Brian. Let's not change the game up just to be silly. All right, so if, here we go, stay with me. If, uh, so what am I testing for? P is less than nine, correct. P is less than nine, generate that. Otherwise, duplicate, this guy, bam, make it smaller, how about that? Otherwise you're at nine, and then you're gonna generate one. Okay, are we feeling okay about this? Are we feeling okay about generate moves from position P? It's a list of all the moves you got, right? Not too bad, right? This isn't, this isn't the hard part yet, really. This is the easiest part, so let's, let's yes. That's very good, thank you, Brian. If we're at 10, we're never gonna call generate moves from a primitive. That's the, 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 the part, part of we're gonna assume as an as a assumption, as a spec, is this requires I'm not at a primitive. You can have that, I don't know if you've ever heard that, but a block can require things of the people calling it. So we're gonna add this implicit requirement that says this generate moves from position P is never allowed to be called if P is a primitive. And we'll promise that, we'll always check it first, primitive, and then if it isn't, then we can call it. But if it is primitive, we'll never call generate moves. Does that feel like okay agreement we'll make? So that, and I would add that in the requirement statement for this. When you get to more software engineering, you'll see that, okay? So far we've written two guys. The only thing left is, the last one Dan said to write is, okay, good. Primitive value position P, win, lose, tire, undecided, okay? So make a block. Other reporter, primitive value of position P, reporter, go. now. This is gonna be an if then also, okay? It says, if I'm not primitive, if I'm not at the leaf nodes, I'm not at the end of the tree, the game's, if the game's not over, I say undecided, okay?
Okay? So how do I know that? If P, work with me, is less than 10, okay, return, report, sorry, we say report and return the same kind of thing, okay, report, scroll down more, wish I had a bigger screen, report, yoink, now, should we just type the word undecided here? We could, but then what if I just translate this, what if I then, I don't know, want to ship this to Puerto Rico, where a lot of software is in Spanish? Or I want to shift this to another country where the software is another language. Then I'd have the English phrase undecided kind of in my code. Kind of gross. For me, that's kind of gross. You want to separate it out. So I'm going to make some constant global variables just, just for me. Constant undecided. That's all. Simple. Now, the annoying part about this is I now have to go over here and say con set constant undecided to the English phrase undecided. And you'll see it's now undecided. Now watch what's cool, cool about this. Report constant undecided. It's just a way to report the string back to my, the caller, but if I happen to change my language, I don't have to kind of look through and look for undecided anywhere. I can have all the English phrases somewhere else. Just change my global variables, and now I can translate to another language easily. Does that make sense? So I kind of like it. It's, like, it's a better way to do code stuff. I don't ever, like, whenever I am writing code and I'm finding myself writing hard coding a number in here, I almost feel bothered by the 10. See this 10? This 10 is bothering me because I'm hard coding the 10. Why can't I make the 10 somewhere else and have that external so I can change that? I like that. But, so I'm, 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 I'm not being totally clean in terms of my software engineering design, but I'm just showing you that we can be a little bit cleaner than just hard coding undecided in there. Okay? And I, I never need to then talk. I just always pass this around. I can then check against that variable. It always just works. There's no string, string. Because what's going to happen is I'm going to literally write the word undecided here. Otherwise, I write the word undecided down here. I write the word undecided over there when I'm checking for it. And if I type the number wrong, the type undecided wrong, I put two Ds or four, an X in the middle, it won't match. See that? That's bad. But if I just copy, drag this variable over, it has to match because the variable is the variable. Love that, right? OK. So. Otherwise, uh oh, otherwise, what am I doing? Otherwise, report what? Otherwise, p equals 10, right? Because we're stopping at 10 in this case. So what am I reporting? Constant, if you're at 10, you've lost, right? Because the person who's made the move to get to 10 is just one, but if I'm sitting at 10, I've lost. Let's confirm that this is our chart. 10 is a lose, a primitive lose. I should, almost be, I should almost actually edit this and kind of bold this and say, this is underlined because that's our primitive. Okay, we start with that. That's the base case, right? So I say constant lose, right? Let's make a new variable. Constant lose, let's like now set constant lose to the word lose and double click that guy, and now don't show it to me, and watch this, bam, bam. Does that feel okay? Let's test it. Testing is a critical part of software development. Let's test all these guys, all right? So, primitive value on position, well that should have returned, what if I give it position 10, what should it return? Lose, love it, hey look, didn't even have the word, now watch this, I can change this up here, Change it to be, how do you say lose in some other language? Give me, give me lose in Chinese. Me, how do you say lose in Chinese? How do you spell it? Give me pinyin. S-H-U. Okay, how about undecided? Wa bu ju dao. I don't know, okay? Okay, that's actually Chinese for I don't know. Undecided, right? Okay, so watch this. No, no, I actually know Chinese, okay. So here we go. Watch, ready? 10. Double click. Shoe, uh oh, 10 is shoe. Lose, right? How about nine? What would you thou? Chinese. I'm writing Chinese. This is going to work in China. Six billion people. No, no. 1.2. 1. 1. 1. Okay, here we go. Let's keep it going. Let's keep it going. How about generate moves? Generate moves, okay? Generate moves. Uh oh. Wait, I that was a zero. If I double click it, it's a zero. How about, how about a five? What should it, what should it be? 
Double click, one, two. What's the other case to test? Can we love? Love it. Okay, we tested it. We feel good about that. Uh, why was zero? That was a good question. Why was empty one? That is some crazy stuff because, well, because, because that wasn't treated as a zero. It was treated as that thing was not less than nine. That empty was not less than nine. It wasn't treated as a zero. Maybe that's a bug. Probably fine, yeah. So it wasn't treated as zero. Ah, okay. Yeah, empty is a special guy. We have to probably think about empty a little bit more to think about that. All right, so that's so this we're gonna do this with a number just so we feel uncomfortable with that. And that guy gave me one and two, right? Okay. Ah, uh, 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 nine. Nine is one. Eight gives me two. Okay. So how about do move? Let's try it. So do move if I have five. So I, oh, do move one on position five. What, is it, what should it do? Six. Easy. So we feeling okay so far? Love it, right? Okay. You want the hard one? Are we ready for the hard one now? 18 minutes. We do the hard one. Here we go. Dan says we can write this thing called value of position P together. Together, we're going to write this thing and we're going to get to the point of all the hard stuff. That's the cool stuff. Position five. Okay. Let's try it. Ready? Make a block. Reporter. Value of position percent P. Here we go. Come on. Coding. Okay. Deep breath. We always start by saying, are we done? If this is a recursion, recursive thing, we say, are we done? How do we know if we're done or not? So first was it probably if testy thing, right? This is, how, how is P done? Primitive. Primitive value of position. When it's done, what does it return? This should work, by, by the way, any, for any game. It should return win or lose or tie. Tic-tac-toe, the full board, nobody gets three in a row. That's a tie, and the game's over. When is it not done? Undecided. So we know it's primitive if it's not undecided. Does that feel okay? Okay, let's try it. So, not, if not, equal, uh-oh, is, is it P? Do I drag P in here? What am I dragging over? Primitive value of P. This is going to check for that particular game if the game is over. If it's not equal to what? Constant undecided. See, now I don't throw about the typo of undecided, undecided with an S, and now they don't match and my code doesn't work. I know the code works because I have a single I'm gonna type. I make a new slide. I'm so important. This is so important. New slide. Stop. New slide. Insert new slide. Single source of truth. There was one place that I wrote the word undecided in that variable. Not I typed it once here, I typed it once there, I typed it once there, and I crossed my fingers that those are the same type, I didn't make a typo. No. Single source of truth says that variable I keep dragging over is the single source of truth for what the word undecided I'm checking for is. That's so important. Okay. So important. Okay? So, let's go back. So, if, if it's not undecided, that means the game's over. It's either win, lose, or tie. And, and the answer was returned by primitive value position, when there's a tie. So what should I return? Primitive value position. Exactly. So if that's not there, I return the primitive value position. If the game says, hey, the game is over, it's a tie, guess what? It returns tie, it says, is it not undecided? Yeah, it's not undecided, so that means it's the base case, and return whatever that answer was, which was tie, or lose, or win. Otherwise, what am I doing? This is where it gets hard. This is why I have now 15 minutes to give you the hardest part of the whole thing. Otherwise, what am I doing? Well, I'm going to start 
by looking back at this tree of things. I kind of need to know what all those values of the children are. If I'm going to look at this table and look over here, I need to know, hey, what are those values of the children? Right? Think of the children. Okay? Win, 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 lose. If I found a lose, I'm a win. Otherwise, if I found a tie, I'm a tie. Otherwise, they're all W's and I'm a lose. So I somehow need to get the values of all my children. That's all I need to do. If I have that, I can just do a little simple, simple test for it. All right? Let's bring it back. Okay. So let's make, it, let's make a script variable. Let's call it, whoops, let's call it, I don't know, children. See how important it is to have good naming? Naming so critical, by the way. And see how cool it is to have a Mac where I can zoom in. Okay, children. What is children? Next thing I have to say is set children to, set, and this should say children to. What is children? How do I get the children from me? I'm a position. How do I get all the other positions below me? If I'm five, how do I get six and seven? Generate moves. Is that my children or my moves? What's one and two? Generate moves is going to be the one and two. I'm at five. I want to get six and seven, right? And then I want to ask six and seven, what are you? What's your value, six and seven? They'll tell me a, num a value, win, lose, or tie. And I'll be able to use that in my tree, OK? So what am I setting children to? Generate moves from position. That's got to be in there somewhere. And that's of position P. That's going to give me a one and two. Okay? I've got a list of one and two. I've got a position five. How do I get the list six and seven? Ooh, ooh, say, who said it? Go ahead. I could map it. I could map over this list I'm getting, one and two. What am I mapping? It means like for each, it means like for each of for each of the guys in one and two, do something to it and, make, and build a list yourself. That's what the kind of map is doing. So what am I mapping? I like the map idea. I like the map idea. I hope I loaded the, I hope I loaded the things. Did I load the things? I didn't load the things. I load the things now. I'm loading it. I, 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 it was bright. Come on, work. Hold breath, hold breath. Because I, I kind of did something to my system. I might have messed it up. All right, I hope I didn't, I didn't mess it up. OK, I need map. Map is going to work with me. Map is going to be my helper. OK, delete this guy. Bam, all right. Uh, uh, no, 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 save this. Ah, ah, phew. OK, Whew. do not do that. OK, and then variables, and then edit value position guy, flugity, flugity. OK, still there. Okay. Set children to, and I see some mappy thing. Okay, somebody said map. Okay, map. I need a map in here, and I also saw that I needed some generate moves. Okay, how about generate moves is going to give me a list. Generate moves gives me a list. Okay, so I take, and that list, I'm going to map over that list, right? For every one or two, for every guy in the one or two list, for all the moves I have. From position P, okay. What am I mapping? I want the, remember, I, I have five. I want to get six and seven. Who can make a move for me? Do move. Who, who wrote it? We did. Let's go find it. Do move. Now, do I put it like with the white or do I put the gray? The gray. OK. Do move what? Well, I'll leave it blank, because that's the move that's going to be coming in, right? It's, I'm mapping over all the moves. So I leave that move field blank. This is not useful, by the way, for me, that I have actually labeled this with move, and that slot is the move. And that slot is the position. See how I'm writing my BYB code to have kind of the, the type it is in front of the thing, so it kind of helps me plug things in easier? I found that really easy when I write BYB code. Okay? Or position what? P. P doesn't change, right? P's fine. P's there. I leave the blank so that the one and the two, one by one, get stuffed in here. Let's try it. Let's try it. No, no, no. That's before we do who's with us. I'm going to just try it. Forget this. Forget the who's try it. I'm going to put it here. I'm going to go here. I'm going to say position P is not here anymore. I'm going to say 
That's five. I wanted the list six and seven, right? Okay? Ready for this? Do I get, say okay here, do I get the list six and seven? Oh, that's juicy stuff. Let's go back. Let's go back and zoom and just, and just appreciate how cool that is. Okay. What's happening? This is like half the battle. The next one is the next big nugget to grab. If you get, if you're with me to now, if we can just hold together, hold it, it's all hands, and sing kumbaya, kumbaya. If we can just be together for this moment, 51, nine minutes. If I can stay together, the next big thing is the whole hard part. Then it just, it's gravy after that, okay. Generate moves gives me a list of moves, one and two. I wrote do move to take a position and a move, but guess what? Map is gonna hand that move one by one, the one, then the two yielding the new position five plus one, the new position five plus two. Generate moves from five gives me one and two. We know that. Do move on five and a one is gonna give me six. Do move on a five and a two gives me seven. And do move when I can't drag it is an annoying BYB. Dragging, not dragging. Not loving the drag factor. There it is, okay, okay? This gives me six and seven. Quickie, thumbs up, got it, totally aced it. Medium, still love to hear it, see it again, down. Look, all the ups, a lot of ups in the room. Okay, good. So now, we can try to get, we gotta, we're finishing it, we're, gonna, we're, gonna, we're, we're closing it out, folks. Value position, edit, bam. Set children to children. Now the children are a list of six and seven. P's back, thank you, Brian, put the P's back. Put the P's back. Good call. That's a, a mistake that I've made before. Thank you for that, bro. Okay, P's are back. P's out of here. Okay? So now, that's half the battle. Why? I now have six or seven. All I need, this is the most beautiful part, all I need is somebody who can take a six and tell me what the value of six is. All I need is somebody who can tell me what the value of six is. All I need is somebody who can take a list of six and seven and give me a list of win and lose. If I have that, I can start asking, is there a lose in there? Is there a win in there? All I need is something to take a list of six and seven, return for me a list of win and lose. How do I do it? Let's make a variable to make it to make the code look really cool. Right, up here, watch this. How about children values? The values of the children. Let's set children values. By the way, I find using these kind of thing really useful for making code readable. Okay, I have a list of six. And six children is six. A list of six and seven. I need a list of win, a win and a lose. How do I get it? I need help. This is where you talk. How do I change six to win? How do I change seven to lose? Yeah. Call value position. Recursively call value position. So I'm going to call it in here, but value position takes a position, not a list. How do I take a list and ought to know, transform it to another list. How do I map a list to a list? I'm looking around, I'm seeing some eyes, I'm happy, okay? So guess what, map again. Map value position over, great, good call on, that, on the catch on that one. Over what? Children. I now have child values, children values, set to a win and a lose, or whatever it happens to be. This works for any game. I'm writing a solver for any game ever. That's not loopy. If it goes forever, because it can go forever. It has to be loop. It can't be a loopy. <sighs> now I have a list of win, lose, win, tie, win, lose, tie, win, tie. Now I go back to this slide. 
how do I translate this slide? Now I have my list of values. What do I do for my list of values? What's the first thing? Test. It's a win if there's a lose in that list. So, if, and cake, if, here we go. Shanley and Bill Cosby, if, here we go. Do I have, me, contains, oh, contains. If, child values, children values, contains what? Lose, am I typing lose here? I'm not, I'm making a variable. I have one, thank you, I have one. Contains, constant lose. What do I return? Control, control, come on, work with me. Report, report, what am I reporting? Win, but I'm reporting win with typing the word in? Constant win, folks, stay, if, if I go a minute over, this is so good, this is really so good. Set constant win, say okay, set constant win, constant win to be, how do you say win in Chinese? Which one? Y-A-N-G? Y-I-N-G. Y-N-G. Okay, everybody remembers that win means ying, okay? Say ying, ying. Okay, all right, here we go. Stay with me. Where's my code? Where's my code? I'm ready to get I'm doing so well in my position. Come on, faster. Okay, report, variables, scroll over. Come on, three minutes is going to work. Constant win, stop showing it. Constant win. Otherwise, there's probably an otherwise in here. Otherwise, what's the next part of that thing? Okay, otherwise, if children values contains, what's the next thing here? If it's not a win, it might be a tie, right? Otherwise, it's of a tie. That's actually the game theory thing. Otherwise, of a tie. So, rather this is constant lose, I throw it away, I make a variable, I say make a variable, I say constant tie. I drag it over, I'll put it in there at some point. Then report constant tie. Otherwise, all the children are winning, therefore I am a lose. Okay? All I need to do is say okay to this. All I need to do is make a set constant tie to be some value that's actually not the same as the other guys. How do you say, how do you say tie? Equal? Yang, right? The same equal? Yang the. Yeah? How, y A N G? Wa yang da. Same, okay, yang da. Might be wrong, but I'm close. I have to put all this, they're all set. Okay? Now, watch this. This is the craziest thing. Value of position. Value position 10. What's the value position 10? What should it be? Uh, lose. Okay? Double click. Shoo. Okay, I'm gonna change this back to thing. Lose. Because I'm gonna forget who's what. You, you with me here? You okay? You, but you appreciate that I could have been right in Chinese if I wanted to, okay? Just for, just for the effect, just for effect, okay? 10, lose. Oh, you gotta be kidding me. Are you serious? How about 9? Double click. Win. Wait, wait, are you kidding me? 8. Come on, come on, come on. No way. Double click. Come on, 8. Double click. Win. What, are you serious? Seven? No way. Double click. It takes a little longer now. Are you actually serious? Let me look. Come on, double click. Double click it. Double click. Lose. I'm walking my way back. Lose. Win, win, lose. This is working. This is incredible. Stay with me, video people. Stay with me. If you start walking, watch this. Watch this. How about a, I make a list. Answer. How about that list answer? How about, oh, I don't know, for i equals 1 to 10, say undecided, because I don't know, for i equals 
for i equals 1 to 10, right? 1 to 10, set the value of answer to be uh, add, add, uh, oh, I don't know, const variables, add constant undecided to answer and go. 10 undecideds over here, okay? 10 undecideds over here, from 1 to 10. Remember, we started 0, but we don't have a 0 indexed list, right? Now, are you telling me, Dan, that I'm going to do this here and say, for i equals, this is, it's actually more fun to do it backwards. Actually, Brian, four works backwards, yes? Four works backwards, watch this. Four working backwards. For i equals 10, actually, 10 to 1 to step minus 1 to 1, right? Replace, replace, this is so good if you're going to stay with me. Replace item i with, of answer, with value of position, value of position, not 7, but value of position. Make the stage smaller, stage smaller, value of position i. Are you kidding me? Let's work it backwards. Make the stage bigger. Ready? For loop. Don't fail me. Oh, I got to zoom in. I got to zoom into this. This, you got to be kidding me. You've got to be kidding me. This is going to work. Lose, win, win, lose, win, win, lose, win. Every time it takes a little longer because it's searching the tree, it's doing it redundantly. It's like visiting it and then visiting it again for the two. It's not remembering any of that. That's called memoization. Win, if one gives me lose, it's all over. I mean, you better, guys better give me some kind of love here. If this works, if this works, I'm not sure if it's going to work because it only worked for nine straight. Whether it works for 10 is a still question now. But we're still seeing. And it might take a long time. Hey! Hey, people! The answer's in the back of your handout. You, you walk away with the answers, folks, okay? Higher to functions and recursion. You can do it. Tutors are going to, TA is going to be working with you on Tuesday to make sure it happens. Thank you for staying a little later, folks. Here's the schedule. And I'm editing this to be higher to function night. It is party time. <laughs>